You just hear it all the time, like, just wait, just wait, just wait, right? I'm just over it. Like, I'm tired. Okay. Hi guys, it's me Carolyn from Challenge of Music and I'm back with another video for you guys. I'm really excited today about this video. And please follow me on all my social medias at Carolyn Joe Music, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, all that, and YouTube. Subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And please, please comment and leave me feedback. It's definitely welcome. So I just want to get right into this video. All right, here we go. I'm not waiting on my husband. Nope. I'm not waiting. Not this girl. No. And... In my opinion, neither should you um, or wife, you know, if you're a man watching this. But definitely if you're a woman, do not wait on your husband. I'm tired of this whole waiting movement. It's everywhere in Christendom today. Like everywhere, every time you see a singles conference, like um, a webinar, um, all types of videos online. They're always talking about waiting on your Goddardane husband, Mr. Goddardane, waiting on your Boaz, all that type of stuff. And... I mean, yeah, it sounds great, but I feel like it's just been beaten to death, okay? And any person that's watched, you know, some videos about singleness and stuff, you just hear it all the time. Like, just wait, just wait, just wait, right? I'm just over it. Like, I'm tired, okay? Um, number one, because I feel like it, it gives women this, like, whole, like, lingering type of thing. It has them just lingering around in some limbo until their husband just pops up out of nowhere and then they come back to life and they just want to do everything now right which i don't think is right um and also it's just not biblical um you don't see anyone in the bible especially whenever a woman is mentioned her just waiting specifically on a husband you don't see it because it's not there right i don't i haven't found any scripture um every time you see a woman in scripture she's doing something like she is doing something right she's not lingering she's not being depressed and sad and wanting to kill herself you know and being env envious of other women because she's not married you don't see that you only see that today on like social media okay for example anna um in the bible when she's mentioned she's a widow she's obviously an older woman she's in the temple every day fasting praying worshiping god all day long she lives there in um in the temple when you hear about rahab she's a prostitute you know you see her helping the children of god and then she, later on she's mentioned in the lineage of christ when you see the four daughters of Philip the Evangelist, they are prophesying, you know, they're prophetess or they're prophesying, you know, and all these women, when they're mentioned in the Bible, at the time they're mentioned, they're single, like they're single and they're doing what God wanted them to do. Why aren't we, right? Like, why aren't we in the 21st century? Like, what makes these people different from us? I feel like it's just a culture and the pressure, you know, that women put on themselves and that they have from, you know, traditional families and just society in general. And it's like, we need to break that, okay? Don't wait on your husband, okay? Don't do it. Follow these three Ps that God has given me. And I truly believe if you follow these three Ps, you're on your way somewhere. You're on your way to God's best for your life. Number one is pursue. First P, pursue. Pursue God with all of your hearts. Pursue him each and every day. Every day you get up, pursue his plan for your life. Be his hands and feet on the earth. That should be our number one priority you know, doing what God wants us to do, living for him and only for him so that we could see the needs of other people around us. Because when you're waiting, just literally waiting, lingering around, waiting for a husband, you're just living life selfishly. You're not doing what God has really called you to do, you know, and he's called you first and foremost to pursue him first above everything. So, we need to stop idolizing marriage, stop idolizing relationships and putting everything else above God. Pursue him first and you and he will give you desires of your heart. He will give you his best, but you have to put him first. Right. 
All right. So I have to admit, you know, last year, you know, God gave me the desire to get married, you know, and I was really excited about that. You know, I was never I'm not this girl where I've always dreamed of marriage and kids and stuff. You know, ask anyway. I'm I'm just never really been that girl, but he put that desire in my heart and I was really happy. I was really excited. And, you know, but then I started to get to the point where I started to believe a few lies. You know, I started to think like, oh, you know, it'd be too hard to meet somebody organically, you know, just because of, you know, the way the world is now, you know, everybody's so busy and the internet and all this stuff. I just thought it would be impossible. Then also too, you know, I started to get confused because I'm thinking like, okay, God, well, you gave me this desire, you know, well, who is it? You know, I wanted to know who it was. And then so I started to go around the mountain of confusion. And if you are believing any lies and if you are believing any confusion, you need to come up out of that um, immediately. Um, it's great to have a desire to be married. That's awesome. That's great. And it's great to get excited. But don't allow yourself to be stuck you know, going around the mountain of confusion about who you think your husband is. Don't allow yourself to believe any lies from the enemy because that's just going to take you away from, again, God's plan for your life. Okay, and pursuing God, which it should be number one. Okay, so what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to just trust God, right? Trust Him and move on. Like, literally, trust Him and move on. Like, literally, don't get stuck around that mountain of confusion wondering who your husband is. Don't get stuck in those lies, you know, that you're too old or that it's never gonna happen. Come up out of that, you know, pray about that and come up out of that. All right, number two, prepare. I was asking God for my husband, but I wasn't even prepared. You know what I'm saying? I'm still not prepared. God is, has me in a season of preparation. And I'm sure he has a lot of you women in seasons of preparation, and that's okay. You know, that's why I'm not trying to knock these conferences too hard. You know, if you need to go to a conference, go. You know, get on these webinars, take these classes, pray, fast for your husband, fast for your marriage, you know, seek God's face, you know, seek more understanding about what season you're in, you know? And listen to God's voice when he's speaking to you. Don't ignore it, okay? Because when you prepare, you will be ready. When Once you prepare, you will be ready. You'll be re ready for the ministry that marriage is. Because it's not about you. It's about the ministry that marriage is. Marriage is a ministry. Marriage is bigger than you, right? For You'll be ready for the responsibility of marriage. Because you got to be ready for that. Because marriage is a huge responsibility. And also being ready for the blessing of marriage. You got to be ready to handle that blessing. Because that's a big, big blessing, right? Because if you're not ready, if you're not prepared, then it's not going to last. And you, we see it everywhere. People getting divorced every day. Do you want that? Like, do you want to get divorced? I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? And I know you don't either. And I know God doesn't because he hates divorce. All right. So number, two, num excuse me. So um, pursue, prepare. And the last uh, P is purpose. And this is extremely important as well. A lot of women are not focused on their purpose. They're just literally, you know, putting their whole identity around a man and throwing away their purpose so that they can have a relationship. And that is the devil. That is super, super demonic. Because you know why? We were born with purpose. God knitted us literally together in our mother's womb. And everyone came out of their mother's womb. Guess what? An individual. So guess what? We have an individual purpose that we must fulfill. Okay? Like, even before God gave Adam Eve, he gave him purpose. So our purpose is more important than any relationship and it trumps any marriage ideas you may have. Walk in your purpose. Jesus, he was single. A lot of people may not even, you know, focus on that, but guess what? He was single. And what did he do? He was born with purpose. He walked with purpose and he fulfilled his purpose. And guess what? His father in heaven was pleased with him. And that's what we need to follow that example. We need to follow that example. That's way more important than any other plans that we may have, right? And 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 you'll see that because even when you get married, that should only help you you walk in your individual purpose even more. And you will help your husband or wife walk in their purpose even more, right? You know what I'm saying? Because two heads are now better than one. And so, you know, marriage is not a right. You know what I'm saying? It's not a right. It's it's a blessing. It's a ministry. It's a responsibility. Okay? 
and and you got to walk in your purpose first and foremost and then you can get to that point all right so let's just recap one pursue god period 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 pursue god pursue him pursue him he will give you desires of your heart i promise you Number number two, allow God to prepare you so whatever he gives you will be able to be successful and it will last. Number three, walk in your individual purpose. Die empty, ladies and gentlemen. Die empty. Do not die full, okay? Don't get stuck believing lies. Don't get stuck around the mountain of confusion, Okay, live a full life. That's why Jesus died so that you could have life and life abundantly. Okay, and most of all, trust God, trust God and move on. Give it to God. Trust him with your heart and move on and work, work in those three P's again. Pursue, prepare, purpose, pursue, prepare, purpose. Okay, please write that down. Please, guys, don't forget about that. Okay. So, you know, I'm not waiting on God. I mean, excuse me. I'm not waiting on my husband. All right. I'm pursuing God. I'm pr letting God prepare me and I'm walking in my purpose. So I inspire you. Hope you guys are inspired to do the same. You guys have a wonderful day. I love you guys and be blessed. Bye.